The paper said on the 19th of June, 500 people gathered. Paper says the police couldn't control the mob. Wait, hold on. So the 500 people that gathered, this wasn't a Juneteenth celebration? <laughs> Not by a long shot. Was what happened on June 19, 1865 in Texas, really the end of slavery in America? Slavery at its essence is control. And so what happens in the South is a struggle to control. The mentality of the state seemed to have been, we're not gonna let them go. You can miss the humanity when you emphasize 10 million slaves, right? We wanna talk about someone's son, someone's daughter. Now, June 19th, 1865, somebody got freedom. Somebody's child got freedom. Somebody's mama got freedom. Somebody's grandmama got freedom. And when that happened, that's like an exodus experience all over again. You can just imagine. You find out you're free, there's a party on every corner, <laughs> of course. But then there was the reality. What next? What does Juneteenth reveal about the nature of the struggle for freedom? How did a Bible that was used to justify slavery become an inspiration for liberation? I say, hey, we should care about the poor. Yes, amen. Hey, we should care about the marginalized. Yes, amen. Hey, we should care about injustice for black people. Whoa, whoa, brother, You're going too far. And it crushed me. This is not just a story for Texans or for those like me seeking to connect with their roots. Juneteenth is the story of faith's power to overcome suffering, good to overcome evil, and how a people's fight for freedom was delayed but could not be denied. Here I come. Don't sound like you're slowing down any at all. <laughs> <laughs> There's work to do. 